Hey everyone, this is Neil King for Random Acts of Cartooning, and I'm here in Haddonfield, New Jersey. And this is the 20th anniversary of this great sculpture by John Giannotti. And I'm going to draw this out in watercolor. But first... Okay everyone, uh, this is influence for this episode is Jeff Smith's Bone. This is out from Boneville, so this is the first collection. I'm sure he's had many of this since I bought this specific book, but he's one of my favorites. He's the most traditional type of cartoonist with a style that I think of when I'm going through things, this beautiful kind of brushstroke stuff. So I tried to pick out a few really nice pages. He does things like this, where he really understands contrast and that the line is just so beautiful. I mean, that's a brush. And I love when he does a certain amount of the landscapes to show how his technique can be done with that line. So I tried to find a few things. He's a great storyteller. These are the things I'm looking for to set up the story, to bring the viewer through in an interesting way. I love his little landscapes. They're kind of based on reality. These great little characters. I love these kind of monstrous characters of the eyes. But it's not that all super realistic. But when he does a beautiful scene like this, you get the sense of that strong line in the front. And it recedes back in a very cartoony style. Beautiful use of panels. There's at least six to eight panels per page. This is the cartoony part, but he's telling it so beautifully. Great water effects there. Love it. Um, I prefer seeing his work in black and white, but they've made this into color for the casual comic or graphic novel enthusiast, I guess. I love all of them. Look at these great characters. Love those eyes. All brush. Maybe the same brush. Does that lettering, hand lettering. Beautiful. Classic stuff. Jeff Smith, Bone. Check that out. So many of them. Okay, so we're going to get started here with, uh, with this sketch. So this is uh, located right in the kind of the center of town in Haddonfield. If you haven't been there before, you can see a, it's during the holidays, so they have a Christmas wreath around the neck. But I think I'm going to keep that wreath out of this image. So uh, I'm just getting my shapes down. It's a double page spread. And I think uh, this sketchbook has like a 90 pound watercolor. So it, uh, it holds up when you're putting, I'm gonna be using some uh, ink line and um, a monochromatic wash with this thing. So I have drawn this many times. I know John Giannotti, he's my father-in-law. He also um, spent many years at uh, Rutgers University in Camden and was a great director of the, uh, the fine arts department did a lot of great things but you could see this beautiful sculpture and people have been coming to Haddonfield recently just to see this it's so beautifully done he did so much research with it so I love how it's all set up and I'm just trying to get uh, a certain amount of the major shapes in this now it is the 20th anniversary of this and I do remember when he was creating this he brought the whole community together brought school groups in, lots of people to create this uh, amazing thing. I remember the opening and everything. I was there. I, I probably did a sketch during when they first uh, showed uh, the sculpture out to the public. So um, the thing about this, and because he did so much research with it, it just looks like it exactly would be. And nobody's positive with all this stuff from the bones and stuff, but I'm in it. So I thought, uh, for example, for this one, I, I thought I'd put him in there. And being a cartoonist, it's pretty easy if you've drawn him as many times as I've drawn him. 
uh, to kind of get him in there and sketch him out. It's kind of a little brisk day in the 30s, so I'm trying to move kind of fast. But, uh, but for my first swing through this, uh, I always like to get a, a quick pencil sketch in, get most of the detail that I, I want to be able to do that I don't have to go right in with, uh, with my pen. And I'm just trying to get the, those proportions, especially for that head. You know, it seems almost like duck build, like it's a, it's a very unique looking head. But I'm trying to get a, a good sense of it compared to the rest of the figure. So um, as I go through this, and it's pretty tall, I'm, it's, I'm not sure if it's, it could be up to 10 feet. I don't know how tall this is with sitting up on top of the a little bit of architecture he has in there. I, I really like the stones that he's on and how it all works. So I'm going to probably keep most of that out of the background stuff to this. I'm just going to focus on Hattie, they call her. And again, just to kind of give you a quick thing, like, you know, this is the 20th year anniversary of it. But look at all that great textures in there. Look at that great detail in the eye. All around it, all that great little mark making that he did to give you the sense of the flesh. So I'm, I'm just trying to focus in on as much of it as I can. And when I start kind of doing the detail with my pen, which is a waterproof uh, fountain pen, I just try to get in there and get a lot of that detail in. Um, I always say with this kind of stuff, it's important for even a cartoonist to be doing these kind of things. It's so easy just to do everything you know how to draw. And I can draw a dinosaur, but, um, but it's kind of nice to be able to see uh, probably one of the most realistic um, images of a dinosaur um, that you can find. And it's right there that anybody could come out and draw. And I just love all of the patina and all the, the stuff that's going on here. Look at that great texture in that skin. So it's stuff that I'm trying to do, and I don't want to overmark this sketch because there's a part of me that wants to. So I'm trying to just kind of lay that in. And, um, and I'm just kind of moving along pretty quickly. Uh, the great thing about uh, an exterior sculpture like this, this could be in a museum, but uh, for the community, um, it's one of the things that's, you know, historically, one of the first, you know, bones were found of a hadrosaur in this little South Jersey town. And it's pretty important stuff that there was found. So to commemorate that, uh, John had done this, you know, the sculpture. And so many people, just remember, you know, him putting that together. I still remember all those school groups coming in and them just touching up to it. So again, this is where the cartooning part comes in. I've drawn John so many ways, but uh, so I kind of, I don't even need, need him to be there when I'm doing it. But I think it's kind of a memorial to the 20 years. It's amazing. It feels like yesterday that he made this thing. And uh, so I thought I would uh, just throw them in there. Quick little dashes in there. It's tough, like when you're drawing something small like this, you're so afraid to make that one line that can just mess it up, right? So moving my way through, I'll put in most of this fine line stuff in first. This is where all the cartooning stuff comes in. And then I'll kind of go back and try to keep looking at where some of these things, these major things are. Again, I, it's, it's hard when you're a cartoonist, you just wanna fill it in. But um, the great thing also about this sculpture, you can see it's so interesting from all the different angles. You know, and when you see this kind of a thing, um, you could draw this from any angle and it really would be an interesting uh, composition to see something in the round like this. And I'm glad it wasn't like against a wall or something like that for people just to kind of move around it. So I'm kind of getting in here with, uh, with the, the fingers and all that stuff. Again, I keep looking at the proportions, like where's that arm coming through? 
Where does the other arm start showing through? And I have that fold uh, in the sketchbook that I have to be aware of. So when you're doing this kind of a stuff and, you know, if this was just on one page and I was just going to tear it out or something, it's a different feeling for your design. But for me, I'm always thinking of the graphic part of it. So I just want to make sure I'm seeing enough of it on one side so the fold or that gutter area doesn't kind of swallow up something that's uh, important. So I was able to kind of get all of the main parts out away from it so that both sides are kind of interesting uh, and your eye is brought along for the whole piece. So it's kind of like, you know, I guess that you could look at it like a poster kind of design or something. Um, at first I was thinking about putting in some of these background images, some of the landscape stuff, but the more I was doing it, the more I was thinking, I think uh, it's best to just focus on the two of them. So I'm going to put a little bit of those, uh, the, you know, the, the markings around. But I don't want to overdo it because, again, if this was maybe a stipple piece or something like that um, where I was going crazier with that, maybe I could see putting all that in. But for me, I'm really looking, I'm squinting my eyes and trying to see all of the darks and the lights. So that time of day what it, where it's reflecting off of... Uh, off of the image you're still seeing stuff but with this the musculature where all of those parts are coming because it you know again you don't think of it when in your mind if you're going to draw a, uh, a dinosaur and there's so many different tour types the hadrosaur here um, that you think they're all you know that's this is kind of the arms are smaller or this or that and but when you see it like this the proportions are really interesting and it makes um, the the dinosaur seem so much more likely to be able to be moving around like this. And the musculature uh, really gives you a sense of what an animal like this probably was like. You know, that it was able to move around pretty quickly uh, for such a something that was that heavy. And again, being... Um, this type of environment to see it um, I think people really get a sense of it because of the sculpture and you know John's idea and his graphic design feeling about what a somebody what a public sculpture should do and how it interacts with the world around it I like the little courtyard people can see it from the street so they're drawn in and you know for some people walking up to it they're like you know walking around the corner they all of a sudden see this big dinosaur out of nowhere it's it's great it has all the theatrical parts to uh, a uh, public sculpture that you could possibly want that's that's probably why it's like one of the great ones out there especially in the on the east coast I'm sure people come around just to see this kind of uh, work and uh, and how the community you know you see people getting their pictures taken around it every single day and um, it's great for the community and and I, th you know, any type of time that uh, there's an anniversary of something, a big event like this, it's great to, to think about it. So as you can see, I'm just really, again, focusing on where that stuff is happening. There's uh, the stone that's below that tail. I really like how it just would be that tail is kind of hovering right over it. And little bits of foliage and stuff, like little, little stuff. Um, so I'm going to erase some of my color pencil and get ready for the the watercolor part which will finish this off okay everyone as you know i am a working cartoonist so this is, we are talking about the holidays right now so don't forget to go to my amazon site where you'll see some of my different types of books that i have uh, strange tales for boys and girls that's an all ages book snowman in the springtime all ages, three uh, little pigs in a ba uh, in a blanket. These are all things that uh, all kinds of kids would like. Limited color. This is a series that I did. Um, the deep end. Spaghetti Eddie with the, with the meatball eyes. 
And my parents are ninjas. That's kind of a three tandem thing that I had done. Also, I have more educational types of books. Who Stole All the Heads at the Met? Fun book. All kinds of art history. Then I have some more of my adult books. These were online books that I compiled as graphic novels. Kill Me or Die. Abbey in Hell. And Forbidden Planet. Different format. Black and white interiors. Lots of fun. And then my most recent, Shock. Let There Be Fright. Again, all the things that I'm doing, all my episodes, everything I'm doing here, as a uh, and all of my things, it's really about getting my books. So support me in the holidays and get to friends or someone in your family some of these books. Thanks. Okay, so I have this uh, little portable watercolor set that I just bought. And I'm going to see how I like it. I'm just going to do like a sepia tone. I'm really thinking about it. At first I was like, should I do this? Like I was thinking of grays and blues. But I can't help it. I, I think for something like this, I, I had to go with a sepia tone. So uh, with this, I have that water brush. And it's great because, especially if you're doing one color, like these kind of sketches, you can get in there and out of there pretty quickly without having to do much more. I have some paper towels around if I had to change colors. But the idea is um, you just kind of push your colors out. And um, if I was... It's a pretty fast way to mix colors on the side and you just push with your your fingers and it pushes the water up to the brush and more pressure gives you more water and less less you know what I mean so you're going through and I'm just again looking up there and doing my light to dark technique which is pretty typical with this this is a wet on dry uh, technique where I, I don't it's not like a block or anything that you wet this board down a little bit or tape it down so that it could handle it so the wet on dry paper is the way I handle it and that's mostly for any of my sculpture I mean any of my uh, my outdoor sketches and you know you're kind of on the run I, I don't know some people I, I think it was nice that day there weren't that many people around I feel like I'm always in the way and stuff so uh, I think this total sketch may have taken about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, something like that. So I'm just going to put a little value on him and you can see I'm just kind of slowly getting it in and then you start building it up. You squint your eyes, you look for the contrast and then you just keep digging in. Now there are so many interesting parts to that skin and the, the architecture of that dinosaur that I could if I was doing a very finished piece of the head alone, I think that would just be, I, I think I've, John has done multiple pieces like this, just to kind of get the idea of what's going on there. There's so much happening. Look at all those lights and darks happening. But for a, for a quick sketch like this, um, you're just getting the, the, the larger areas of light and dark. And I'm trying to leave those lights in there as much as I can so you can kind of see the roundness of the face. And uh, it gives all the character to the dinosaur in itself. And, um, and you know, I mean, he always says it's not necessarily, we don't, nobody knows exactly what these things look like. But I, I'm wagering some money this thing looked like this. And uh, so again, adding uh, some nice darks in there. And again, you can see it comes together pretty quickly when you're doing a wash like this. Um, I didn't have to go back with my with my line to, to deepen up any of the lines. I could have, but I didn't do that with this one. So again, I, you know, putting this in, getting that leg, light on the top. Just kind of brushing through. There's not a lot to do with this. And probably the whole wash took me, you know, maybe five minutes or so, five to seven minutes from start to, to end. I mean, he has so many things going on there that it, it's just beautiful. And I, it's a, I'm sure people have painted this and sketched it for years, for the 20 years. Because I know, like I say, 
I've been there a couple times and I, I definitely drew, have a couple sketches somewhere in one of my sketchbooks, um, especially of the day. It was a big day when, it, when, he, uh, when he did this. So again, little darks and lights, and every time I go back and forth, I'll add a little bit more. You want to have that, you know, the little shrubbery stuff going on there and the, the, the stones, give them a little value, um, but I'm trying not to uh, overdo them, but you want to see them coming out of it. So uh, I try to kind of lay that in. Lights and darks. And, you know, because the two characters are close by each other, um, you do want to unite them in some way. So if I had done architecture behind it, it, it would bring them together. Um, but I thought it, it's, you know, you see them together and you're like, yeah, this is kind of, this is him, this is his piece. I like this idea of him. It's almost like a, a photo of him standing in front of it, the finished product, you know. So, but for me, uh, I'll usually put a little bit of a value in the background, uh, like a medium with a nice little texture on it uh, to bring your eye through. And it kind of reestablishes even the what's happened there with the skin of the uh, of the dinosaur. Uh, that repetition of that for the for the actual um, overall finish is kind of nice with this. I don't, I, I'm not going to go very dark with it because again, it could make it seem like it's darker out. But you want to see it's nice and fresh. And if you put it off between the two. Um, it just pulls them together as, as if they're there together. And I'll do this for sketches for a lot of character work or things just to kind of bring this as one total image together. Right? And as soon as you do that, you'll start seeing things. You're like, once you see that value, then you're starting to say, hey, should this be darker? And I, I can't help it. Like, I'll go back in and keep touching up. But the thing about sketches is you, you, there is a place that you got to end. And, um, but for this, I, uh, I like the idea of that, you know, the, the light to dark, because every time you do something in a background, it makes sense to make this darker because then he, uh, he'll pop out more and the dinosaur will pop out a little bit more. But, uh, cause, the figures will have light, medium, and dark, where the background will be more like a light and a medium to push it back. I wouldn't put a super dark back there, or, my, or your eye could be pulled back there to see it. So I'm just going to, you know, finishing it off. Not much more to do. It's just me deciding when I stop this. And um, just, you know, a fun little sketch. Trying to try just finish that off. Sometimes like this, knowing that there's kind of your a deadline to it, it does push you to be like, all right, you gotta let it alone and, uh, and go. But he's got such great musculature that John has shown. I keep going back. I'm just like, I, I can see it now. I can see the roundness of that, the leg. And it makes it a lot of fun. So there it is. Right, this was fun. If you can get a Haddonfield, get out there see that uh, Hattie, the Hadrosaur, by John Giannotti, 20th anniversary. The great G John Giannotti has done many sculptures. There he is. Thanks for watching, and we'll uh, see you next episode.